Daniel chapter 11, 1 verse, verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be, shall he corrupt with flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. But B again says, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Amen. I want to share with you on knowing God. God. Theologians believe the Jewish people experience some fierce persecution during their history. But none worse than under Antiochus, the Syrian king who reigned 175 to 174 BC. He assumed the name Theos, Epiphanes, which means the manifest God. Sometimes we look at some of those movies and we see those rulers calling themselves God. It is a historical fact of where they were that they were supreme leaders and God-like rulers that I might know Christ. And when he said that I might know him, he said I might know him at three levels. He said that I might know him in the, and the power of his resurrection. He said I want to know God in resurrection power. I need to know him. I need to know him. To know him because there are, there, are, there are three key words in the text. is to know, to be, and to do. And if you know God, then you will be strong. Amen. If you know God, if you develop a relationship with God, then you will be strong. They that know their God will be strong. And there is an absence of strength because there is an absence of relationship. And then we should do which is to perform an act of duty, a role, etc. To execute, to accomplish, to finish, to complete, to serve. I'm talking about doing, it means to perform. To perform an act of duty, a role, etc. So you're, you're performing, doing something. It is to execute, it is to accomplish. So you're executing, you're accomplishing, you're finishing, it's a finish, it's a complete task. You have to know God through His will. You have to know God through His will. So John 17, 3 declares, this is, this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. It, it's taking time to know God through His will. Take your time to know the word of the Lord. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of, the, of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any twin sword, piercing even the dividing of sons of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When you take time to know God through His Word, when you read that Word, take it time to know God, more than just for information, but for relationship. Take it time to know God, because it's only the Word of God that is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword that will pierce the soul and the spirit the divided asunder. Amen. Of, of, it even goes down to the, your marrow. Psalm 119. Verse 9. Psalm 119, verse 9. It's very it's 9 to 16, but I wouldn't read all the verses. But verse 9 declares, Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to the word of the Lord? So how do young people cleanse their way? By taking heed to the word of the Lord. Verse 11 of that text declares. The word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, or sin against God. 
Amen. Verse 15. Verse 15 and 16. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy thy ways. Amen. And verse 16 says, I will delight myself in thy statutes and I will not forget thy word. So you have to know God through his word. If you take your news from 9 to 16. You have to know God through prayer. Matthew 6, 16. Know God through prayer. Matthew 6, 6. Um, Matthew 6, 6. Sorry, not 6, 16. Matthew 6, 6 declares, and Jesus said, but when thou, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. You get to know God for yourself. Get to know God. Go get a private place where you develop a relationship. And if anybody who is in any relationship, sometimes they want some privacy. Based upon the level of relationship. If your relationship is at a lower level, then you could be with everybody. And then it, when it gets to a higher level, you would have a few of persons. Then it gets to that higher level where you, you call it your circle of friends. And then it gets to the level where you know it should be immediate family, spouse. You'd be at that level. We are, we are close. Amen? And, you, and when you're really close to somebody, you don't want to lie with anybody else. Matthew 7, from verse 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Continue. We go to verse 11. I will get all there. Verse 8, for everyone that asks it, receive it, and he that seeks it, find it, and to him that knocketh it, it shall be over. Verse 9, or oh, what man is there of you, who, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a silver? I get to verse 11, and if he then be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more your father which is in heaven, Give good, give good things to them that ask him. Talking about relationship, getting to know God in relationship. If earthly fathers who you have a relationship with, if you ask him for bread, he would give you a stone. If you ask him for fish, he would give you a silver. How much more your heavenly father? That you are at a place where you don't have a relationship with your heavenly father. God who is the best father that you could ever have. Let me tell you, those of us who have a really good, 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 good earthly father relationship, God better than that. Amen. And those of us who may never or not have an earthly father relationship, let me tell you, if you get to know God, you will have better than what even those persons who have a physical relationship have. Amen. I assure you in the name of the Lord. Because God is a good father. How much more? The scripture says, How much more shall your father which is in heaven? How much more? You know how much more is how much more? How much more is plenty more? Your heavenly father, get to know God in prayer. Because your heavenly father who has so much more will give unto you good gifts. Amen. Let me tell you, it's not God talking to you in that difficult moment. It is the devil stressing you and frustrating you, thinking that your heavenly father has forgotten you and forsaken you. God says, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will be your God. I will be your source. I will be your strength. I will cover you. I will walk with you. I will comfort you. Why we me endure for the night? Your joy will come in the morning. I'm allowing you to go through because you need to go through to come through. You have to develop certain muscles within your own life and in the midst of the storm you can know that I am God that I am no petty God, I'm no weak God I'm no God who could just provide give me those little things but I'm a God who can do big things Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 it, it gives 
it, it, gives, it, it is some, that verse is a very powerful verse. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. The word was precious. There was no open vision. People didn't hear the voice of God. There was no vision from God. So they were doing what they were doing and nobody heard God's voice. And could I say to us as Christians, you can arrive at the place where you know or you hear God's voice. And God speaks in different ways. He speaks audibly. When you call your, when you call your name audibly, I'm going to tell you look around. I didn't hear call the name, but you call my name several times. And you only call my name a very loud. And I find a way when he finds me going to the air. Like he's God free. You know, like a parent. Hear his voice. You come back here. But God speaks. You, you, you feel it, the impression of words within your own spirit. And this is what God is saying to do. God speaks. But the word of God, we are fast becoming to a place where the word of God is becoming precious. That people don't hear from God again. Can we only be, the pastor say, what does God say? What has God said to you? Because if you know God, you will be strong and do exactly. Bible as we continue, I, I can't read it, but the Bible says God called Samuel. And Samuel didn't um, um, didn't understand who God was at that time. So he ran to Eli and he said, You call me, and Eli said no. And he called him again. God called him again. And he ran to Eli the second time and Eli said, I didn't call you. And he ran the third time to Eli. Then Eli perceived that it's the Lord who calling him. And he said, the next time he called it, he'll say, um, thy servant, here I am. I think it was eight. Speak, Lord. That's Samuel's advice. And, and Eli said, verse nine, thank you. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, go lie down and it shall be. If he calls thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. And verse 10 talks about the Lord came and stood and called him at the other time, time Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant hear it. Speak, for thy servant hear it. Are we listening? 